In SharePoint, site columns provide a way to, to have consistent data between and among multiple lists or libraries in your site. Uh, for example, if you have uh, a need to archive documents, um, you might you do that by way of a column in your document library called status. So what we're going to do is create a document or create a document status column, uh, which will have values of in progress, complete, and archived. And essentially, these will be uh, this data will be used to record the status of the document. And also, in a later video, we'll show how you can use that to identify files to be moved to a separate document library for archiving purposes. Uh, now, the reason that we want to start with the creating a site column for this is that we, in order to move those files properly from one document library to another, both document libraries need to have the same schema, or the same architecture to them. So the same columns, the same column names, the same column values, etc. And the best way to ensure that is to use site columns and something else called a content type, which is really just a collection of site columns. Uh, so this is the first step where we're just going to create a couple of site columns or really just one site column um, for the purpose of tracking that document status. And then later we'll show how to put that into a site, I'm sorry, into a content type. And then in a later video, we'll also show how to build the Power Automate flow to automate the process of archiving those documents. So we're in a site here. This is just a SharePoint demo site that I have. And to get to where we need to go to create site columns, it takes a few clicks. Uh, it used to be very easy, but in the modern experience, they've sort of hidden, uh, not really hidden, but just made it harder to get to some of the classic site uh, settings. So when I click the gear icon up here, there is a site information link. And then within that site information sidebar, if you scroll down, you'll see something that says view all site settings. Uh, so this is where you want to go to get to the classic site settings page. And on the site settings page, somewhere you'll see a group called web designer galleries, which should have two items there. There are site columns and site content types. Um, and again, without giving too much away, content types are essentially a collection of site columns. Um, so right now we're just going to start by creating the site column we need. So we'll click site columns and then create. Now we're creating this through the GUI, through the web interface. There are other ways to create site columns. Uh, if you need to create more than a few site columns, there are uh, is a you know basically and you have some familiarity with PowerShell you can use PowerShell uh, to do this but for right now we're sticking with the basics and going through the GUI for this so I'm going to start by calling this column uh, doc status and you'll notice I'm leaving spaces out there because if you create a column with spaces in the name then it'll encode those spaces as you know other characters to keep them web safe um, I just avoid that by leaving the spaces out at the beginning, and then we'll go back and update the, the display name later to show document status. And we'll make this a choice column. And uh, site columns can be grouped. So if you have a number of site columns around a specific topic or a specific you know, theme, you can create a new group, or you can choose one of the existing groups here. Uh, I'm actually going to create a new group and just call it document manage columns um, and again you can use an existing group just leave it at custom whatever you want but I'm just creating a new one called document management columns um, we're not going to require that this contains information you if you know that you always want this to require information then set select it yes um, and for choice column I pretty much never recommend using this enforce unique values so then our choices for this choice column are going to be new, um, actually new, and I'll say work in progress, and 
complete and archived. And again, at a later point, we are going to use this archived column to essentially trigger a or identify the files that we want to be moved to another library. Uh, so that's it. We just add those choices in there and then select whether you, how we want to display that drop down, radio buttons, check boxes, etc. I'm just going to leave the standard doc, uh, drop down menu there. Uh, I usually, in the case of site columns, do not allow this fill in choices, but you can if that's necessary. And then the default, which will be kind of the value set unless someone specifies a different value for that. So we'll leave that set to new and click OK. So that's it. Now if I just scroll down to look for our document management columns group, there's our doc status. Now if I want to change that display name um, to make it a little more you know, human readable, I can just click on there and say document status. And OK. Now when you update that column, it's basically going to say you're updating, it's going to update all the lists where this site column is used because later essentially you'll be using the site column in multiple lists. This is just saying that everywhere this appears, it's going to appear with that new name. Are you sure you want that to happen? Um, nine times out of 10, you'll say okay and yes. Otherwise, if, if you're not sure that you want it to be changed everywhere, then just take a step back and kind of reevaluate what you're trying to do. Uh, so that's all we need to do to create the site column. Uh, in uh, the next video, we'll actually go through how to create a content type that will include that column that we can use in our document libraries.